Hello, and welcome to Ben's Balls of Yarn. In this video, I want to show you how to make this Selbu inspired crochet colour work mitten, or whatever I end up calling it. First things first, I just want to tell you a bit of a backstory of how I came up with this design. So I guess it all started with a video by Engineering Knits, where she made some Selbu inspired mittens, and I'd never heard of them before. Selbu, apparently, is a place in Norway, and this is where the Selbu mittens come from. Now, I watched this video and I thought, oh, that's pretty cool, and then thought nothing of it. And a few weeks ago, my brother asked me to make a pair of mittens. My brother asked me to make a pair of knit. Asked me to make a pair of mittens. I keep wanting to say mittens. Mittens for his friend's girlfriend. So my brain went, ah, what were those mittens that she made on engineering knit? So I went and did some research and found these Selbu mittens and immediately bought the yarn and started knitting uh, and I've created two designs here because when I want to do something I can't just be like oh I'll just get the yarn to make one and see how it goes. I'm going to get yarn to make five or six and then make it over and over and over again. So these are two designs that I've come up with. Now this video is about how to crochet something very similar to this but if you want a video on how to knit them please let me know in the comments and I can be making that. Be making that, great English. So I was knitting these mittens and very soon into knitting them I thought I wonder if we could make something similar with crochet. A because I know some people don't know how to knit and it would be great if crocheters can make a similar product too but B I prefer crocheting to knitting, let's be honest. And as you can see, I didn't even finish weaving these ends in before I got too excited and thought, I have to make a crochet version. <laughs> so about a week later, they're now in existence and I've created a pattern for them. So if you want to make some that are exactly the same as these, I have a pattern on Ravelry and on Etsy and that will be in the description field. In this video, I want to show you some of the more tricky bits to these mittens so that when you're following along with the pattern, any confusing bits will be explained. Yeah, and shown. I'm going to show you how to make the cuff, how to make the thumb hole, how to decrease for the tip, and how to add on the thumb, plus maybe some other things that I'm forgetting right now. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So for these, I've used 65% wool and 35% alpaca yarn. The wool is for warmth, and apparently when these get wet with snow, for example, they dry much quicker than, say, acrylic yarn does. So from my research, it's best to use a wool yarn. I've used the wool and alpaca blend because the alpaca supposedly makes the gloves a little more soft and a little more itch-free. In my opinion, Acrylic is slightly less itchy, but these really don't bother me. Like, even on my face, they are quite soft, and I'm perfectly happy with them. If you're making these for someone who has very sensitive skin, then you could try and use merino wool. I don't know if it has the same properties as just normal wool, so that's up to you. I've used this brand, Drops Lima because it's relatively inexpensive and it comes in lots of great colours and they have a version of this yarn which is 100% wool if you prefer that and it's even cheaper. As for colours, I've used this gold and white here which I absolutely love. I love the gold colour. But you could use, for example, in this glove I've got the brick red and the white and in this glove I've got the navy blue and the pearl grey and I think these also work really well. You just wanna choose two colors that are really contrasting so that you can see the pattern. And I would really recommend going for white for the main color and then basically any other color for the contrast color. And then it was definitely gonna contrast. Or you can do the opposite. You could do the contrast color in a white and then choose any other color for the main color. And then you'd have a colored cuff. As for tools, I used three crochet hooks to make this and the reason I've used three is because I wanted some bits to be a bit more loose and some bits to be a bit more tight without changing the pattern. So for the cuff I've used a 3.5 millimeter hook 
and for this section I've used a 4.5 millimeter hook and then for this section I've used a 4 millimeter hook and it's all written out in the pattern and it tells you when to change for the hook sizes. All right, let's start making the cuff. We're going to start with our smallest hook size as stated in the pattern and our main coloured yarn. Leaving about 10 centimetres of tail, we're going to make a slip knot. And now chain 13. Here I have my chain 13. And now we're going to single crochet 12, skipping this first chain, and I'm going to go into this top loop just here. One, two, three, ten, eleven, twelve. For row two, we're going to chain one and turn the work. Now for row two we're going to be only working into the back loops. Skipping the chain one we have these V's and we're going to work in to the back loop only of the V just here and we're going to single crochet 12 so there's one. Let me show you that again. Here is a V and we're just going to go into the back loop like this. Two. Can I get you even closer? Here is a V. Go into the back loop. Three. And continue along the row for 12 total. So I've just completed row two and now we're going to repeat row two 28 more times so we have a total of 30 rows. I've done my 30 rows and when I'm doing ribbing I always lose count of my rows, so I like to count the ridges. So here you can see a ridge. If you have your yarn tail at the bottom left and your working yarn at the top right, and you can count 15 ridges, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, you know you've done your 30 rows. Now, chain one, and we're going to fold the work in half like this. And we are going to join the two edges of this rib together. So to do this, you want to go through the back loop of your first stitch and then through the top loop of what was your chain stitch. So here you can see the back bars of our initial chain. Ignore those and then above them is a loop. And we're going to go into this loop just using my fingernail to help me because it is a little tight and the yarn is a little splitty okay <laughs> and we are going to slip stitch I'll show you that again into the back loop of the next stitch into the top loop of the original chain stitch and then slip stitch. So pull a loop through and then pull that loop through this loop. One more time through the back loop, through the top loop of the initial chain stitch, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. I like to do it in two goes. And when you're doing slip stitches you want to have fairly loose tension otherwise it is going to be incredibly tight. So you just want to do 12 of those to close up the cuff. So now we have made a ridge. It is slightly different to the other ridges, but you will hardly notice in the final product. I'm just going to tuck my original yarn end in through the cuff to get it out of the way. And now we are going to swap our hook to the medium sized hook. 
we are now going to be working along the top edge of this cuff. We have the ridge we just created using slip stitches and the next ridge along. And between each ridge, we have two places where we can add stitches. So as you can see between each ridge, there is two holes at the top. One hole has above it three strands of yarn and one hole above it has just one strand of yarn. These three strands consist of a V at the top and then another strand underneath that V. We want to put our hook underneath these two strands of the V. And then the strand below the V should be underneath the hook. So we've gone underneath those two legs of the V and then there will be a strand underneath. And we want to single crochet. I'm just going to mark that single crochet with a clip marker. This next gap is very loose and if we make our single crochet into this gap here, we are going to end up with a gappy cuff, a gappy cuff. <laughs> so instead we're going to look below that strand to this V and we're going to go under these two legs of the V. There is another strand under the two legs of the V. So just like the one we just did, we're going to go under those two legs like so. And there is a strand underneath the two legs of the V on top. And this initial strand we're also going to have on top. So it looks like there's three loops on top of your hook. And this is an increase. So we're going to go into that same hole twice single crocheting. So we've done our first three and then our next stitch is also an increase. So we're going to skip this ridge and then we have this V and we're going to go under those two legs. That's one. I'm going to use my fingernail to help me because it is a little bit tight. Single crochet. Nope. Sorry, this is an increase. And now we want to make our next stitch and we're going to go into this V that is below the single strand of yarn here at the top. And the hook should be going under three loops. So the two legs of the V and that single strand at the very top and single crochet. So the aim of going into these places, which I'm showing you is just so that you don't get too big of gaps in your cuff. If you find it easier just to go into a different place, that's completely fine. So the aim of this round is to increase from 30 to 50. So to achieve that, we're doing a single crochet and two increases 10 times as is stated in the pattern. I've completed my 50 stitches around the top of this cuff and we've come back to our stitch marker. And we're going to work directly into this next stitch without doing a slip stitch to join the round. A bit like Ami Gurumi. Now we're coming on to the colour work. I'm going to change to my largest hook size. And the reason for this is that I find when I do colour work, my stitches can become a bit tight. So by going up a stitch size, I'm going to be able to achieve a glove that's not too snug. <laughs> Okay, I've put up a portion of the pattern for us to follow along. So to read the pattern, you're just reading from right to left, starting from bottom and going upwards, just as you would crochet. The white squares are going to be your main coloured yarn and the grey squares are going to be your contrasting coloured yarn. So I've got this lovely golden colour. So I've divided up this first part of the pattern into a grid and I've done this because the pattern kind of repeats every four stitches. So in the first row, it's white, white, gold, gold, white, white, gold, gold. And it continues like that until we get up to this band and then it changes slightly. So our first two stitches are white, white. So I'm just going to remove my stitch marker and I'm going to crochet two single crochets 
in the white, in the main color. Now we're going to add in our contrasting color. So to do this, I just like to fold the yarn in half. And I haven't completed this single crochet stitch. I've left two loops on the hook and I'm going to complete the single crochet stitch with the gold. So now we've added on our gold, I've just got to do two stitches in gold as is stated in the pattern. Now before, whenever I did color work, I would pick up the yarn, do my color work of that color, let go of the yarn, I've still left two loops on the hook because I'm changing color here, and then pick up the new yarn, and now I have to do two in white. One. Two. Leaving two loops on the hook, not completing that final pull through because we're changing color. But I want to show you something that I've come up with which makes it way quicker to crochet. So you take your two colors, your main color is in front, and your contrasting color is behind. You want to bring your main color over the top of the contrast color to form a little X here. Then you want to put your index finger of your left hand between those two stitches like that. And then the index finger of your right hand you want to put in this gap here so you're forming an X and then bring your index finger of your left hand through that gap. So now the yarn is crossing over on your finger like this with the main color on top coming towards you and the contrasting color below going away from you. And now you can crochet using both strands. So I've got to do two more golds according to my pattern. So I'm finishing this stitch with the gold and to pick up the gold I'm going to go in between this gap between my finger and the working yarn, not over the top. So let's do two single crochet stitches in the gold, like so, and then leaving my two loops on the hook, I'm going to change back to white and I just simply pick that up like this and do two in white. Next is two gold. So I really like this technique that I think I've come up with, maybe someone else has come up with it before, <laughs> because it makes colour work so much faster. One thing it does do is leave floats at the back of your work. So I've just completed round two, and the first three stitches of round three are all white. Now with this colour work technique I've been doing, we've been leaving floats at the back of the work and most of the lengths of stitches here are either two or just one and I think that's fine for a float at the back of some crochet work. But a length of three is getting a bit long and leaving floats in crochet, if they're too tight, which is almost invariably the case, it ends up pinching the work like this. So I don't want to have a float of more than two stitches in length. So here is what I do to capture the contrasting coloured yarn when I have three whites in a row. The first white I crochet just as normal. Now the second white I want to capture this golden yarn. So I'm going to go into my work I'm going to go underneath the golden yarn from left to right. Now I'm going to go over the top of the golden yarn from right to left. And now I'm going to go over the top of the white yarn from left to right. And then underneath the white yarn from right to left. So I've kind of twisted this white yarn around the golden yarn by doing that. I'm going to pull it through and then I'm going to grab the white yarn by going underneath and through the two yarns, like so. And I've kind of captured this golden yarn, but it's a bit bunched up here. So I'm just going to pull a little bit, and then now I've captured this yarn very nicely here. And then my third single crochet, 
I can just do as normal. Imagine on a different pattern you had to do a fourth stitch, a fifth stitch, every alternating stitch I would do this twisted kind of stitch. Pull the yarn through so it's not bunched up and then the next stitch I would do as normal and let me show you that one more time slowly. Go into the work, under the golden yarn, over the golden yarn, over the white yarn, under the white yarn, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through, and tug on the golden yarn. Okay, but what if you wanted to crochet three or more stitches in the contrasting coloured yarn, which sits behind the main coloured yarn here? Well, we will just do our first single crochet as we normally would. Then the next one we will go into the work, pick up the gold like normal, pull it through, and then instead of going underneath the white again, we'll just go over the top and pull through. And then the next one we will work as normal. And now we've captured the white. Say we wanted a fourth stitch, so we need to capture the white again. So we will go into the work, yarn over as normal, pull through, go over the top of the white, yarn over, pull through. And then for the next one, we will go into the work and yarn over and pull through as normal. And now we've done five goldens and we've captured the white here and here as we went. Easy peasy. So let me unravel this kind of craziness that I've just done to demonstrate that and I will continue going in the round until I get to round six and I will show you how to do the increases. All right I've just finished round five and you can see the pattern starting to come through nicely. Now this is actually a really good time to test for fit because the main issue you're trying to solve with a mitten is trying to get the mitten or the glove past this part of your hand, which is the widest part. So let's try and pull the glove on. And as you can see here, don't mind my tail lens, it is fitting lovely over this widest part of my hand. It's not loosey goosey but it doesn't get, it's not really tight and hard to pull over this part of the hand. And if you can get it over that part of the hand, then you know you have got the right size. If it, if you're struggling to get it over this part of your hand, you might want to go size up. And I will talk about sizes later on in the video. But for me, this size four and a half crochet hook is perfect. So it's time to start doing increases. Now this is super simple. All you have to do is follow along the pattern from right to left as we have been doing. And every time you see the little eye in the pattern, that means increase. So instead of doing one stitch in that color, you're just going to do two stitches of that color in the same place. The first two stitches of round six say one single crochet in white and then an increase in white. So one single crochet in white and then in the next place we're going to do two single crochets in white. So there's one, there's two. Now because that's technically three stitches I'm actually going to capture my main coloured yarn there. So let's undo that increase and to capture the contrasting coloured yarn we're going to do my wrapping technique that I showed you before. Tug on that contrasting colour yarn, and then go into that same place again for an increase. I'm on row 18 of the mitten and on this row we need to make a hole for the thumb. I'm on the left glove here so I've crocheted up to the white stitch and the next two stitches have little C's in them this means we need to chain. Uh, the next chain is gold and I've not completed this single crochet stitch yet. 
So because the next chain stitch is gold, I'm actually going to complete this stitch in gold. And now this loop is going to count as our chain stitch. The next chain stitch is white. And then the next stitch is going to be a white single crochet. So I'm just going to pull through another loop of white. And now this will be the top of that single crochet stitch. Now in the pattern, I've come to these two vertical lines, and this means that you need to skip 14 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And in the 15th stitch, we do our next stitch, which is a white single crochet. And then the next stitch is a gold single crochet. And... Just continue on the pattern and we have created our thumb hole. I'm going to continue the pattern with the medium size hook because I want this part of the glove to be slightly tighter than this part was. I'm just on round 19 and I've come up to the two chain stitches which we did on the previous round and I'm just going to continue the pattern as it is written. So my next stitch is gold and I'm just going to go under the two legs of the V of the chain stitch. Gold. And my next stitch needs to be white. So I'm going to complete that stitch in white and then I'm going to go into the next chain stitch going under the two legs of the V. And then my next stitch is white so I'm going to complete that in the white and then I'm going to go into the next stitch in white and then I'm just going to continue the pattern as it is written. So we've reached up to row 37 which is where we're going to start our decreases and I do apologize I've cut my thumb and I've put a plaster on it so please just ignore that. The tutorial must go on. So this row starts with a white single crochet and then a white decrease. So I just want to show you how to decrease in this pattern. So start with the white single crochet and because our next stitch is white I'm going to just complete that stitch in the white and now we have to do a decrease. So the top of our crochet stitches are little V's. We are going to go through the front loop of the first V and then through the front loop of the second V. We're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. This is how we do a decrease. Now because I'm going to have four whites in a row, I actually want to capture my gold yarn. So I'm going to undo that, go through the front loop of the first V, go through the front loop of the second V. Now we twist, twist, twist to capture the gold yarn, pull through both those front loops, yarn over and pull through both loops. Now my gold yarn has bunched up, so I'm just going to give that a tug to straighten that out. And now my next two stitches are also white. So I'm going to do one more white, not capturing, and then a white capturing. Oh, I'm not going to complete that in white because the next stitch is gold. Pull that gold through. I'm on the very last stitch of the final round of the mitten, and it's a gold stitch. So I'm going to start the stitch in gold and then I'm just going to complete it in the white. I'm going to pull that through nice and long and using my giant scissors I'm going to cut that and I also need to cut off the gold with a nice length for weaving in. I have my white end threaded onto a needle and we are going to go into these stitches through the front loop from back to front like this. So through the front loop, 
from back to front. Or should I say middle to front? That's number three. And you should have 10. Okay, that's 10. I'm going to pull that nice and tight. And then I'm just going to stick my needle through the center hole, which is a little closed up now. So the needle's partially through. And now I'm going to flip the glove inside out very carefully so as not to stab myself. Oh, just stab myself. <laughs> Okay, and then pull the needle all the way through. And then we also want to take the gold end. I like to use a blunt end of the needle when I'm doing this, so I'm not splitting any stitches. Where is it gone? Where is it gone? There it is. So now we can pull that through properly. looks like I've accidentally put my white end through this loop here, so I'm just going to pull that out. Okay, and now I'm just going to pull rather firmly on this white, just to make sure that hole's properly closed up. And now I'm going to weave in my golden end. This time I'm using the pointy end of the needle, because it doesn't matter so much if I'm splitting stitches during the weaving process. In fact, it might actually help to secure the yarn even more securely. So I'm just trying to stay on this, on the loops on this side of the glove, not actually poke through the glove, because we don't want to see this woven end on the other side. And I'm just going to go down and then back up again. Now this yarn has wool in it. It's 65% wool, I do believe. So it should not come unraveled very easily. So I'm just going to go back and forth twice and then cut it off. And the white, I'm just going to go around the top again, just to make sure that that hole is fully closed up because we do not want that coming undone. So I'm just kind of going under some stitches, sort of in a very mm, what's the word? A, a rough circle, just to make sure that hole's not going to widen. And then again, I'm just going to weave the white end through some of these back loops down and then back up. And then I'm just going to use my giant scissors to trim that off. That is our hole nicely closed up. Okay, now we have the main body of our mitten done. We need to add the thumb. Before I show you how to add in the yarn for the thumb, let's just take a look at this thumb hole. So if we look at this first white stitch here, this is stitch number one of the 14 stitches. And if we look at the stitch before that, at this gold one, I'm going to call this stitch zero. Stitch zero already has this white stitch going into it, but we will need that stitch to add on this color. So I'm gonna call it stitch zero. Then we're gonna count 14 stitches all the way around. And this is stitch number 14. And then the stitch next to that, this gold one, which already has a white stitch going into it, I'm gonna call this stitch number 15. Then, if we turn the mitten upside down, we have this area where we did our chain stitches. There's quite a lot of floats here at the bottom. We're just going to ignore these floats. And what I want you to focus on is this white stitch here and the spaces either side of that white stitch. Okay. So we're going to go back to our largest hook size to make sure we have a thumb that's not too snug. And 
we're going to add in our yarn. So here is my contrasting coloured yarn. For the left, we have to start with the contrasting coloured yarn. So I'm going to leave about a 10 centimetre tail. And then I'm going to make a slip knot. Which is a little bit difficult with this plaster on my thumb. So I'm just going to <laughs> use my hook there. So I've created my slip knot. And we're going to put the slip knot on the hook because we are going to be doing a standing crochet stitch. So to do a standing crochet stitch, you start with a slip knot on your hook, you insert your hook into stitch number one, you pick up your yarn and then you yarn over, pull through, and now our next stitch is white, so I'm actually going to complete this single crochet stitch with the white. So again, I'm going to leave about a 10 centimeter tail, fold in half, and pull the white through. And that is our standing crochet stitch. I just pull on the gold to tighten it a little bit. And our next stitch is white. So I'm going to go into the next stitch, stitch number two, I'm going to pick up the white yarn, Ooh, not the tail. I'm kind of holding the tail here with my middle finger to provide tension. And then I'm going to start my crochet stitch. And my next one's gold, so I'm going to complete this single crochet in the gold. And at this point, I'm actually going to pick up both yarn colors using our technique. And I'm going to continue around the thumb, single crocheting, one gold, one white, as is stated in the pattern, until I get to that chain two space of the back of the thumb. I've crocheted my 14 stitches around the thumb, and we need 16 stitches, so we're going to have to pick up two stitches along this chain area. But I'm just going to hide my tail ends inside the glove just so they're out of the way. We need to add in two more stitches, but there's quite a big way to go across the back of the thumb to get back to the start. So in order not to create holes, this is how I like to do it. So to create the next stitch, we're going to go into stitch number 15, as I pointed out earlier. Yarn over, pull through. Then we're going to look at this white stitch again, and we're going to go into the gap on the right. We're going to put our hook under all of those floats behind. We're going to yarn over with the gold again, pull through, and now we have three loops on the hook. We're going to yarn over with the white, because our next stitch is white, and then we're going to pull through all those three hooks. Three hooks, three loops. <laughs> I don't know why I made that noise. <laughs> okay, and then we are going to do a white stitch. We're going to go into the next gap next to this white stitch here. Under all those floats, pull through white. And then we're going to go into stitch zero, as I pointed out earlier. We're going to go into that stitch. Ooh. Yarn over, pull through. Our next stitch is going to be gold, so I'm going to complete this stitch by yarning over with the gold and pulling through all three loops. And now we can just continue around the thumb as is stated in the pattern. And we can use these tail ends that we've tucked into our glove to sew up any hole that is still remaining. To finish off the thumb, you're just going to decrease and sew around the top just as we did the top of the mitten. And then your glove will be complete. Here I'm blocking my glove and I'm embarrassed to say I never block anything. So this is like my first time. So 
the crochet comes out a little bit twisted. So what I'm trying to do here is just line up those side bands. As you can see, I've got it all nicely lined up here. And now I'm using my iron on quite hot and steaming it. Please let me know in the comments if this is the right thing to do with wool. But I'm getting it all straightened out and pulling the yarn around with my fingers, holding it in place and being very careful to steam it in place like this. As you can see, the glove is so much nicer now it's blocked. Alright, that's how to make the mittens. One more thing I want to talk to you about before we leave this video is changing the size. So, obviously I've made this mitten to fit my glove because my hand is my model. And I have, I would say, a smalls man hand. A smalls? A small man's hand. <laughs> Uh, or perhaps a medium woman's hand. So if you want to crochet a glove or a mitten for a small man or a medium woman, yep, a small man's hand or a medium woman's hand, then this pattern you can just uh, crochet as it is written. If you want to adjust the size, if you think this is going to be too small or too big, then here's what I suggest. Try using the same yarn so this is the lima yarn, and using half a millimeter smaller crochet hooks for a smaller one. So for the cuff, use a three millimeter, and for the first bit, use a four millimeter, and for the top bit, use a three and a half millimeter. Additionally, drops make a yarn, which I've put here, which is the same thing. So it's still 65% wool and 35% alpaca, but it's thinner. So you could try using that and a three millimeter, three and a half millimeter and four millimeter hook and you should get a smaller glove. The important thing as I said in the video is making sure that you can get the first five rows over the widest part of your hand and then the glove should fit nicely. If you want to make the glove bigger you could use the same yarn and then increase the hook sizes. So maybe use a five millimeter hook for this bottom bit and the four and a half for the top bit or even try a five and a half for the bottom bit and a four millimeter for the top bit. I would always use a three and a half millimeter hook for the cuff, even if you're using a five and a half millimeter hook for the next bit up, because this is very stretchy and you want to keep it quite tight around the wrist. One more thing you could try is using this yarn, which is also a drops yarn, the same blend, but it's an Aran weight, so I think that's 10 ply. So that way you're going to get a bigger glove and you can use that with a four millimeter hook, four and a half millimeter and a five millimeter hook. Okay, I haven't had time to test out different sizes, but I am planning to do that in the future because I have more glove designs in my brain. So when I do my next glove, I'll make it for my dad who has a much bigger hand. But although it's going to be a different design, it's going to have the same base design, the same number of stitches in a round. The only thing I'm going to be changing is the size of the yarn and the size of the hooks to make it bigger and smaller. And this is what they do for selbu mittens as well. If there's anything that I've missed, please let me know in the comments below and I'm happy to answer your questions. I've got two more designs percolating in the mind that will be coming out at some point in the future, hopefully before winter ends. So if you don't want to miss out on those designs, please subscribe. And if you like this video, you found it helpful, please like. If you make these gloves, please, please send me a picture. You can do it on Instagram, maybe tag me, or I think in Ravelry there's an option where you can upload a picture of a pattern that you've made. I'd love to see if anyone else makes these and what colours you chose. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!